In this episode we will be taking the small atmospheric lander that was part of the Duna mega ship containing all of the communications network relays and non-atmospheric and atmospheric lander. So this is the one atmospheric lander that will hopefully today be landing on Duna. So stick around, this is gonna be fun. Especially considering we're doing everything with remote tech and 60 seconds time delay. All right, so with that thing being said, we have in the previous episode launched our relay network. So it's time that we finally take care of this small atmospheric probe and hopefully land it on Duna and send some science back. That's the whole point. So. I have queued up extension of the solar panels, activating of the Communitron 32, and this time decouple. So on this craft we have Communitron 32s actually rather than the <laughs> than the atmospheric lander. I think I messed that one up, and honestly I think that was the problem. I'm not 100% sure, and it will be a mystery what happened with the non-atmospheric landers there. All right, getting ready to decouple. There we go. Oh, kidoke. So this craft, this dinky little craft should be landing on Duna today. So let's see how it will fare. Kidoke. Now, uh, I'm also checking that the Duna cruise ship, I want to be aligned with it and I want to be roughly in the same plane as it. So I'm making sure that we fix our orbital inclination at some point. There we go, good. I'm going to queue that up to target Duna cruise ship, signal delay, alright, once when that everything is taken care of, then we're going to be activating the engine and then we will be queuing up the maneuver. The maneuver is supposed to be happening in 12 minutes and 34 seconds and that will bring us into alignment with the cruise station. So I'm just going to gently jab the time acceleration, we turned off, turned on, activated the engine. And soon enough, we're gonna hit the gas. Oh, look, that is beautiful. All right. By the way, the title of this episode should have been How to Land a Robotic Lander on Duna Using Remote Tech and Signal Delay of 60 Seconds. Oh, look at this. Ike is coming at the background. Isn't it glorious? All right. So, let's check how are we doing. We are in apoapsis 567 by 129, okay, orbit, good. So the next order of business, I want to make sure that at the periapsis, I'm gonna lower my apoapsis so it's pretty low. I want to be it to be around 85 kilometers. Uh, and I'm doing that, technically it's not necessary, but we have plenty of Delta V. We have 2,200 Delta V. So that means I'm gonna go first to low Duna orbit, and that will give me a choice of the landing site. It will also give me a chance to align with the crew Duna relay that will be acting as a relay during the descent because the relays are actually too high up for this antenna to work. Actually, not the Communitron 32, but the one that will not break in the atmosphere. So that's the whole point. We have multiple antennas on this, and this is not by accident. I have deliberately put two antennas because when we will be going down, I will show you exactly what you mean. You can only queue up commands for one of the devices. You cannot queue up for two. Maybe you can, but it gets buggy. So there we go. Now we are at 130 by 85 kilometer, and then I'm gonna be checking if everything looks okay. This is a beautiful lander. All right, good. So do we have any more science? I don't think so. Now, at the periapsis, we're gonna do add a maneuver where we will be reducing our apoapsis or an, to 65 by 65, yeah. Making sure I queue up the maneuver. I'm also checking that my solar panels are aligned. Taught by the previous experiences, I didn't want to basically lose the <laughs> ability to steer. So there we go. Let's hope once we get on the other side, we will have enough electric charge. Yes, we will. All right. So the burn will be in two minutes and 52 seconds. It's already queued up. All right. One minute. I'm just doing this gently. 
there we go, beautiful. So, right, the next order of business will be to add on a maneuver node to deorbit this damn thing. And I'm looking like that, so, but... There we go, we have queued it up and hopefully at some point we will be able to have communication, so there we go. All right. The burn will be in 3 minutes and 37 seconds, so we just have to hold maneuver prograde and then we will be going to perform the deorbit maneuver. What my post-editing self didn't realize is that the crew station isn't exactly correctly aligned for us to be doing this, but we are already committed, so yeah, we're going down. Okay, now, what I'm doing now, I will be queuing up maneuvers uh, for when everything goes correct. So I'm actually gonna go and now check the parachutes and I'm gonna toggle info on the parachute. All right, so what I wanna do now is I want to make sure that I d double check. Pre-deployment at the altitude 30 kilometers, deployment five kilometers and it's okay. So it looks okay. I'm gonna actually arm the parachute. I need to make sure that everything is armed. So when we go down, it will deploy. I'm gonna kill the uh, flight computer and I'm gonna engage the SAS. And there's a reason for it because SAS will follow the retrograde. The flight computer will only follow prograde or, or sorry, retrograde for orbit or surface. But in this case, uh, when I switch to SAS and SAS will be t toggling the prograde, uh, retrograde, it will switch between orbit and surface once we get closer. Oh, look at the parallax and the scattering effects on Dunas. Oh, it looks rocky. Okay, so. As you can see, I have also queued up that we will be retracting the photovoltaic panels and that's so we don't get botched re-entry. So now that the SAS is turned on, I have turned to hold retrograde. So folding up the solar panels. Um, actually, I folded up one because I still want to maintain the electric charge and this one is in the shadow. So this is sort of my way of say, securing redundancy. So in four minutes, we will be at a very decent place in the atmosphere. So what I want to do now, I want to queue experiments to give me that atmospheric data. So I'm making sure that I have put the signal delay of four minutes and then I'm just queuing up everything else. Log pressure, log seismic accelerometer, blah, blah, blah. All right. So now when it comes to retracting the solar panels, in four minutes, we will be also retracting the solar panel and we will be deactivating the communitron. Then I'm gonna actually put zero seconds delay. So Actually, I'm going to put 10 minutes. So now what I'm queuing up, 15 minutes, let's put it higher. So now I'm queuing up the deployment. So basically I want to extend the solar panel and extend the communitron 32 with a delay of 15 minutes. So the reason why I did that is to secure that once uh, the craft lands, that there is a queued command open up the solar panel, open up the antenna and trying to regain communication because there will be a period where we will not have communication. So that's why I have to queue up everything. All right, so now we have ditched the heat shield. Oh, sorry, not the heat shield, the descent stage. And now it's time to do the re-entry. So all of these queued commands shall happen in sequence. First, the solar panel and the antenna is gonna be, uh, it's gonna retract. Then we're gonna get some uh, science. And now we have in 11 minutes, we expect that uh, the, if the landing goes successful, now the parachute should deploy once we are safe. And once we are landed, the antenna and the photovoltaic panels should hopefully engage. Okay, 8,000 and okay, the pre-deployment of the chute has happened, beautiful. That should slow us down significantly, as you can tell, all right. And now I'm waiting for the main shoot to happen. Should be happening soon enough. Oh, come on, come on, come on. Okay. Boop. Yeah, well, at least it worked. So we have landed. We are alive. 
And it's good that I didn't ditch the, uh, the heat shield. It used as an impact protection. But, guys, we have landed on Duna. So in seven minutes, I expect now that hopefully we will regain connection because currently we have no connection. So this is why I was queuing up for Communitron to extend. And once it extends, we should be regaining connection. Look at this, 65 se seconds delay, but we do have connection and we have power, which means we will be able to transmit and do science. Amazing. So this is how you actually do this. This is how you pull this off. This is really important because it is actually very tricky to pull it off with a time delay. But um, I thought it would be pretty interesting for you to see, guys. All right, so now the second solar panel is extending and now we can send all the precious signs, but our electric charge is uh, lost. So we should actually, okay, we need to hit the time acceleration until the electric charge recharges, so to say. Okay, I'm going to deactivate the lights because I don't want anything else consuming the power except for, except for the science transmissions. So I have also killed the SAS. And there we go, we are starting to send some serious science. Good. Okay, the probe has landed, it doesn't really matter. The, what matters is that we will be sending the science. So, I have to once again re all of the science experiments, and after that we will make sure that, well, we have the science. So, okay, the electric charge has refilled. So now, log the seismic data, review the thermometer data, review the barometer, review the gravioli, and make sure that we send them, and the telemetry report. So once that those are done, so now we will be, okay, we're not gonna do you, we're gonna send you, gravity, send, 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 beautiful, more, okay, send, and send. Anything else? Yeah, we just need to make sure that everything is sent. So we have gotten a lot of science. So there you go, guys. Looks beautiful, doesn't it? It's really tricky to play with the remote tech and signal delay, even with 60 seconds, but we've succeeded. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.